And in this interview, the girl seemed hella excited about the fact that she just found a dead body. Hey y'all, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Janae, if you didn't know, and today's video is another true crime episode. So if you're ready, let's go. Okay, y'all. So first of all, I'm salty as hell because I literally just recorded this video, like just got done less than 10 minutes ago. And now I have to re-record it because when I went to go edit it, the, the sound quality was terrible. And the reason that the sound quality was terrible was because I'm recording on my phone with this little microphone. Y'all can't see it right here, but I'm recording with this little microphone on my phone. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I broke my computer, y'all. So now, oops, y'all can't even see it. So now my screen is like literally just, y'all can't even, I can't even, yeah, just dead, just dead. So yeah, until I can get that fixed, I'm gonna be recording on my phone, you know, back to the basics. I don't have a problem with that because this is where I started, okay? But baby, this sound quality, ooh, I hope it's so much better this time. I really just did not want to do that to y'all. I could not bear the way that it sounded. It was terrible, terrible. But in any event, let me go ahead and show y'all my nails again. These are the nails that I did this week. I absolutely love these and quite frankly when I start when I sat down to do my nails I had no idea what I was gonna do but I had remembered a design like this from that I saw I don't even know when I saw it child but I saw it and I wanted to try it so here we are now they look really good but this hand looks substantially worse than this hand because you know this is my right hand and I'm predominantly right hand and I'm only partially fluent in my left so it looked decent but I could have done better but yeah, I had talked to y'all about Fifty Shades of Lion Ass Nigga in the last video and everything. Oh my gosh. So let me know if y'all watched that 50 part series that Risa Tisa did on TikTok. Because baby, when I tell you it had me in a chokehold, it had me in a whole entire chokehold. And I had said a couple more things in the last video. Can't remember what I said. But the gist of it was, we've seen a lot of people like that in this true crime space. I'm talking Chandler Halderson. I'm talking, is his name Brett? I can't remember what his name is, but I think y'all know who I'm talking about. Casey Anthony. And I was pretty much just saying that I hope Risa Tisa is safe. You know, she says she's taking the proper measures to keep herself safe. And as of this morning, she says she she got the money. That she done raised the money to go to London and Paris. And baby, I am invested. I can't wait to see all of her adventures. She deserves it. So yeah, y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about her series, what y'all think about Legion, what y'all think about the whole situation if y'all watch it and if y'all didn't watch it i mean i guess y'all still leave comment anyway but yeah i think that's all i said in the last video so let's just go ahead and jump right into today's case so it's january 19th 2022 in canton ohio and a man named clarence birch has called the police to do a welfare check on his 26 year old daughter tiara birch now earlier that morning clarence had received a text message from tiara saying that she had covid and being the daddy that he is, he decided that he was going to stop by Tierra's house after he got off work to drop her off some medicine, bring her some soup, you know, all the stuff that was going to make her or help her feel better. And before he got there, he was calling her, but all of his calls were going unanswered. And eventually the phone just ended up turning off. So it started going straight to voicemail. So he ended up calling his son, Tierra's brother. His name is Tyrese. He ended up calling him to to see if he had talked to his sister and he hadn't spoken to her all day either. And then he tried one more avenue, which was one of Tierra's friends. And this friend said that they haven't talked to Tierra either. So being that nobody had talked to Tierra and her phone was going straight to voicemail, Clarence and Tyrese decided to just go over to Tierra's house to see what was up. So they go over there, they knocking on the door, they not getting no answer. They calling her, phone still going straight to voicemail. And that right there didn't make no sense because one, Tierra was always going to answer her phone. She was never not going to answer her phone. Now, granted, she could have been asleep and resting, but that still didn't, it didn't account for why her phone was going straight to voicemail, seeing as how she was in the house with a charger. It shouldn't have never died in the first place, right? So they ended up talking to one of Tierra's neighbors. And this neighbor said that she saw a tall, thin, dark-skinned male leaving Tierra's house. And she said she also saw people taking laundry baskets to, not to and from, but from Tierra's home. And so with all of this combined, Clarence decided that he was gonna call the police. 
And once the police showed up, Clarence and Tyrese pretty much just told them the same story that I just told y'all. So the officers go, they knock on the door, they announce themselves as police officers, and of course, they too get no answer. But at this point, there's really no reason or cause for them to make forced entry. So what they decide to do is to call the landlord to see if they're willing to open the door for them. So they call the landlord up like, hey, we over here doing a wellness check. We don't really have a reason to bust down the door, but we would like for you to come over here so that you can let us in so we can check, make sure everything's okay. And so the landlord agrees and say that he on his way. Now, while they're waiting for the landlord to come, the police officers get more information from Clarence and Tyrese about Tierra. You know, they just want to know a little bit more about her, who she hangs with, the people she knows, if anybody want to hurt her, stuff like that. And they do find out that Tierra actually has a boyfriend named Vincent Ryan. And the dad said that Vincent is actually supposed to be in jail right now. However, Vincent matches the description that the neighbor gave of somebody, the tall, dark-skinned black male leaving Tierra's place. So that's kind of weird. But Clarence also tells the officers that there's no known domestic disputes between Vincent and Tierra that he knows of. However, Vincent does have prior DV incidents with at least one other female. So the officers decide to go back to their car and run Vincent's name. And when they do, they realize that he actually is in jail and he had been arrested 10 days prior on aggravated burglary charges. So he couldn't have been the person that the neighbor saw leaving Tierra's place. So at this point, the landlord shows up and opens the door for the officers. So the officers go in and as they clear in the scene, they come across Tierra's bedroom. And this is where they find Tierra in pretty bad shape. And it's pretty apparent that she is no longer alive. So Tierra Janae Birch, she was born on June 28, 1995 in Canton, Ohio to her parents, Yolanda Minor and Clarence Birch. And she was one of five siblings. And Tierra was described as an enormously caring person with a forgiving heart and a vivacious personality, which is probably why kids gravitated towards her. And I don't mean just kids that she knew. I'm talking about any kid. It didn't matter whose kid it was. It could have been a random kid off the street. They would naturally take to Tierra. And just as much as the kids loved her, she loved them as well. So it was no surprise that once she graduated high school and started attending Stark State College in North Canton, that she studied early childhood education. Because as we know, those first couple of years of development are very essential in a child's life. So Tierra wanted to be that positive influence in those early stages of development for these kids. No matter what type of environment they came from, no matter what their home situation was, she wanted to be the one that the kids could go to no matter what. And just like she wanted to be that for the kids, her daddy was that for her. Now, granted, she loved her mama and her siblings like nobody's business, but according to family and friends, Tierra was a daddy's girl through and through which is why it wasn't surprising to Clarence when Tierra texted him that she had COVID because he knew that Tierra knew that he was going to come through with that my baby sick kid right away, which is exactly what he was doing on the evening of January 19th. Now, let's go back to the crime scene. The detectives did not find much physical evidence there. However, they did know that there was a strong smell of bleach in the home which to them indicated that somebody tried to clean up the scene. But other than the strong smell of bleach, they had nothing. However, once the autopsy was done on Tierra, they noted that Tierra had been stabbed 52 times, which indicated to detectives that this was a personal attack. This was more than likely somebody that Tierra knew. And while the investigators was trying to piece everything together, Tierra's dad would end up getting a text message. And this text message was from Tierra's phone. And the text message said, sorry for your daughter, know the game. And once Clarence received this text message, he notified the detectives right away. And while the detectives was like, okay, this is some sick shit. This man is trying to grieve his daughter and then y'all gonna text him some bullshit like this? Like, what the hell? They was also happy that this person was dumb enough to text anybody to use the phone because they was like, bet, let's track it, right? So they ended up tracking the phone's location from 10 hours prior to Tierra being discovered so that they could know where the phone was at during certain parts of the day. And once they got those pings on Tierra's phone, they started looking at city cameras in the area where her phone was. And what they wanted to do was see who was traveling with the phone. And what they determined was that every 
everywhere Tierra's phone had been, there had also been this yellow Ford Focus hatchback with a black stripe on it. So essentially, they felt like this is the car that Tierra's phone was traveling in. So the next step for them was to determine who the car belonged to. Unfortunately, though, even though they had this yellow hatchback on city cameras, none of the cameras that the car was caught on had a license plate reader. And so they wasn't able to figure out who the car belonged to right away. However, a young lady named Hannah got to work trying to figure out who this car belonged to. And while she was doing that, detectives decided that they were going to talk to Tierra's boyfriend, Vincent. Now, like I said, he was already in jail, so he wasn't hard to find. And so they took him out of the jail and brought him down to the police station for questioning. And before detectives even got to talking about Tierra, Vincent said that the charges against him was bogus. He said that more than likely one of his exes had got him locked up under false charges. And initially, the investigators was like, okay, everybody who is in jail say they're innocent, but let's play along, right? So they let him continue talking and Vincent tells them that it was either Asia Lindsay or Taylor Hammond who filed these false charges against him because he don't want to be with them no more and they pretty much just trying to ruin his life. And so even though the detectives listened to what he had to say, they kind of brushed that off to the side and they was like, okay, that's all good and well, but we're not here to talk about them or that. We're here to talk about Tierra. And the first question that they asked him was, do you know Tierra Birch? Is that your girlfriend? And he like, yeah, that's my girl. What's up? So the detectives proceed to tell him that unfortunately, Tierra has been found deceased earlier that morning. And when they tell him this, Vincent seems genuinely shocked. He said he has no idea what's going on. But if something happens to Tierra, detectives need to look into one of those two ex-girlfriends that he was talking about. So after they finish interviewing Vincent, they decide to look into this aggravated burglary police report. And what they find is that Taylor Hammond is the person who was supposedly robbed, but the police report was filed by a man named Jeffrey James. So essentially, Vincent allegedly robbed Taylor, his ex-girlfriend, but a man named James is the one who's reporting it to the police. And they make a note that this police report was filed down at the police station. And so they obtained the surveillance video footage of the police station. And they do see a man who appears to be Jeffrey James. But it's not just Jeffrey at the police station. Jeffrey is accompanied by a woman. Now, police had already pulled the photos of Asia and Taylor. And the woman who Jeffrey appears to be with does not look like Taylor. The woman actually looks more like Asia. However, they're not 100% sure if it is Asia or not. So what they end up doing is contacting Taylor because she's the one who supposedly filed the police report. And when they talk to Asia, Asia says she don't know what the hell they're talking about. She never filed a police report. She was not robbed by Vincent. And she don't even know no man named Jeffrey. So she she's completely clueless at this point. So then they hit up Jeffrey. And Jeffrey tells it all. Jeffrey is completely honest with the police. And he says that he was forced by his old roommate and an associate to file this police report. And he says that the old roommate's name is Jamal Bullock. And the associate's name is Asia Lindsay. And he also confirms that the woman in the police station with him when he filed the police report was in fact Asia and not Taylor. So now detectives go back and look at the footage again from the police station. And they realize that there's another man who is in the police station with Jeffrey and Asia. And they come to the conclusion that the man is Jamal, the ex-roommate of Jeffrey. Are y'all still with me? This is a lot, I know. So pieces are starting to come together for the detectives. And they realize that Asia is essentially trying to set Vincent up for an aggravated robbery under Taylor's name. So now while investigators are suspicious of Asia for filing false police reports, it essentially has nothing to do with Tierra's murder. That is until that license plate number comes back. Because remember I told y'all Hannah was out there working trying to figure out who this um, yellow hatchback belonged to. Well, she was eventually able to grab the license plate number from that car. And no surprise here, the car was registered to Asia Lindsay. So now what they do is they follow this car using the traffic cameras. 
and they find that on the morning of January 19, 2022, at 348 in the morning, the car pulls up in a neighborhood that is just about a block away from Tierra's home. And they do see a man and a woman get out of this car and walk towards the direction of Tierra's house. However, this video is not very clear, but they do end up finding a camera that is closer to Tierra's house. And at 822 that morning, they see a man and a woman walking back towards Asia's car. However, in the video, you can't see these people's faces. You just see that it's a shorter woman and a taller man. Now, while they wasn't able to say that the woman was Asia for sure, they presumed that it was Asia because it's Asia's car that they're going back to. But the man, they were able to identify him as Jamal because he was wearing the same exact shoes that Jamal was wearing in the police station when that police report was filed against Vincent. So they was able to connect the two and say that this is Jamal. So after collecting all of this information and all of this surveillance footage, Asia Lindsay is arrested as the prime suspect in the murder of Tierra Birch two days after she was found. Now, once Asia got down to the police station and is being interviewed by the detectives, she was just lying her ass off. Now, her first story was that she didn't know nothing. She don't even know this girl. Yeah, she used to date Vincent, but uh, it is what it is. They not together no more. She don't care about what he doing. She don't know nothing about what he doing. And she don't even know this girl, Tierra, right? So detectives ended up presenting her with this video evidence and her story changed. Of course it did. And this go around, she said that she wasn't gonna say nothing because she didn't want to get in trouble. And that, yes, she was in the area, but she was selling cocaine to somebody. And that's why she didn't want to tell tell the detectives what was going on, right? So then detectives was like, okay, well, girl, we got your car sitting here from almost four o'clock in the morning till after eight. So what are you talking about? You were selling cocaine for that long? So then she changes her story again. This time she tells the detectives that she couldn't have been there. She wasn't there. They got the wrong person on camera because she was tied up in her basement, okay? She said she's into some freaky kinky shit and she was chained up by the neck in her basement at the time of the murder. She said she could not have been there at all because she had a release alarm and that release alarm wasn't set to go off until later on that morning. So it wasn't her. Now, obviously detectives wasn't going for none of that. And I don't know if after this interview, they took her to jail to hold her or if they let her out. I'm leaning towards, I'm leaning more towards they, they took her to jail. But after they talked to Asia, they pick up Jamal and they want to talk to him. And initially Jamal is like, look, I don't know what y'all talking about. But once again, they present him with this video evidence and he spills the beans. And he said that he thought the plan was just to go over there and rob Tierra for Vincent's stuff. So he knew that they were going over there to rob Tierra, but that was it. But he said that once they got there, he realized that that wasn't the only intention that Asia had and that Asia was the one who stabbed Tierra. And he said that the only reason that he went along with the cleanup plan was because he was scared. He had just watched this girl kill somebody and he didn't want to be next. And he genuinely seemed very remorseful. So after Jamal's confession, obviously they took him to jail as well. After Jamal and Asia are hauled off to jail, the detectives do a little bit more digging into Asia and they learned that she had an unhealthy obsession with Vincent and it appears as though she was jealous of him and Tierra's relationship. Mind y'all, Asia was 39 years old when this happened and Tierra was only 26. So girl, you was almost 40 years old acting like this over some dick that don't even want you. So based off of all of the evidence, this is what detectives believe happened. They think that Asia filed a police report against Vincent under Taylor's name so that she wouldn't be connected to it, so that Vincent would be in jail when she carried out her attack on Tierra. She essentially wanted to make sure that Tierra was alone so that she could carry out this attack. And I also think this this wasn't said nowhere, or I didn't read it nowhere, but I think that Asia is also the one who texts Tierra's dad that Tierra had COVID so that nobody would go over there because she had the C 
self quarantine or isolate herself. But little did she know that Clarence loved his baby girl and whether she had COVID or not, he was going to go over there to make sure that she had some soup, some medicine and whatever else she needed so that she can get over her illness. And Tierra just happened to be found way sooner than Asia ever expected. And y'all, while I was doing my research, it turns out that Asia is actually unfucking hinged. Who would have thought? Because just about 12 years prior to Tierra's death, Asia had come across a dead body near her home. And she was interviewed because she was the one who found the dead body and called the police, right? And in this interview, the girl seemed hella excited about the fact that she just found a dead body. I started, um, I was coming home from the mixer. I turned down this alley because I can turn down this alley to get to my house. It's a different way. And pretty much when I did that, um, that's when I came upon the body. And I noticed, and I talked, like I said, I thought the guy was asleep, drunk, and the alley passed out. So I yelled to him, hey, get up. And he didn't respond. I even blew the horn. No response. So therefore, I drove down and I backed out and I pulled back in to realize his head is bleeding. You know, I thought I moved to a nice neighborhood. But yeah, this is not, I don't know, this isn't welcoming. Yeah. It's very sad because, I mean, that's, that's somebody's son. That could be somebody's dad. And for someone to do something like that, it's just like, man, like, people really don't have hearts. But anyways, in September of 2022, Asia ended up pleading guilty to aggravated murder, aggravated burglary, and aggravated, and aggravated robbery. And she was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. And Jamal also pled guilty, but he pled guilty to aggravated manslaughter, aggravated robbery, and aggravated burglary. And he was sentenced to 20 to 25 years in prison. Now, as far as Vincent goes and him being in jail, he was actually released because all of the charges against him proved to be false and made up by Asia. And yeah, that is all I have for today's case. Thank you all so, so very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. All right, take two. Because we're not, oh my gosh, I can't even talk. So the officers go to knock on the door. They announce themselves as police and, you know, yeah. However, Clarence, no, Clarence, no, Vincent. So it was no surprise that once she graduated high school and started attending Stanton Cape, Hmm? Which is why when she, hmm, no, mm -mm, we don't like that transition. So the next step for them was to start, none of the cameras that the, um, none of the cameras that the fort, none of the cameras that the car, oh my goodness, what am I trying to say? And before the detectives even got to start, no. Before the detectives even got to start talking, that don't sound like proper English to me. That either Asia Lindsay or, that either Asia Lindsay or, damn, what is her name? Taylor. That either Asia Lindsay or Taylor Hammond got him locked up and they, because, no. That either Asia, no, okay. And they realized that there's another man in the police station with Jamal in Asia, no. And they realized that there's another man in the police station with James. And no, his name is not James. It's Jeffrey. God dog it. And he genuinely. And he what? And in this interview, my girl seemed. No, nah, she ain't my girl. 